Welcome to the Disney Planning Insights Podcast, brought to you by Princesses in the Mouse Disney Travel. Today's podcast will be concerning eating around Walt Disney World, where to go, what to get, and how to pay for it. Welcome to the DPI Podcast. Thank you for listening. My name is Matt, and today we're going to be talking about dining around Walt Disney World. Peter, why don't you get us started? Sort of a quick mention as we get going into this today is all of the restaurants and all of the dining options and everything that we are going to discuss can be done as a pay-as-you-go. So just keep that in mind that everything that we talk about, you can go down to Disney and you can pay out of pocket for each thing and just sort of cover the bill on your own. But one of the big things that as we talk about restaurants and what to eat at Walt Disney World, we're going to really be focusing on the Disney dining plans. And so to start, we We have three different tiers of Disney dining plans, and Matt and I are going to be discussing those in significant detail. However, before we get into that, we really need to break down some of the lingo so that you can understand the different types of restaurants that are available and what you're going to expect in terms of service and food options and prices even at all of these different types of restaurants. So Matt, why don't you go ahead and start us out with the more formal type of dining at Walt Disney World? Yeah. And really, when you think about going to Disney, you're thinking about restaurants like Be Our Guest and Chef Mickey's and some of those bigger name restaurants that are around the parks. And what those are going to be called, they're called table service restaurants. And when you're looking at them um, on the website, you're going to see that they accept the Disney dining plan and it uses one or two table service requirements. Now they break these down into single credit and multi-credit dining options. So most of your table service restaurants are gonna be what are considered single credit restaurants. So that would only take one of your table service requirements out of your dining plan. There are other restaurants such as Be Our Guest, such as Royal Table, La Cellier in Epcot that are multi-credit meals. What that means is that they are gonna take two table service requirements and you're gonna see that at most of your very high-end restaurants and your dinner shows. So Spirit of Aloha, hoop de doo Review are all multi-credit meals. So Peter, there are some other types of dining around the parks. Can you talk about that? There are, and what we're referring to are the other dining options that don't require you to go in, sit down, have a waiter or waitress, and go through a dining experience. Instead, these are going to allow you to quickly grab food and head to a seating area to enjoy your meal in sort of a a faster manner. And so these are referred to as quick service restaurants. So as we talk about entitlements and all of these different things coming up shortly, We need to understand that quick service restaurants are all basically the same. You walk up to a cash register and there's a menu back behind them and you look at the different menu options and what they have to offer and you order at that register stand and then you walk up to the counter behind that register and they fill your order and they get your food ready for you, give you all your drinks on a tray and then you're gonna walk out into the dining area and you're going to then find somewhere to sit. Now there's still Still themed, they still have fantastic food at these locations, but they just don't have you sit down and work your way through a meal. Uh, Matt, what do you have to say about the quick service? So one thing that I know about the quick service now as well is Disney a couple years ago brought out mobile ordering for some of your quick service restaurants. So that's another thing that you can utilize if you wanna save a a little bit of time and not stand in those lines at the quick service restaurants, you can get on your My Disney Experience app on your cell phone, put your order in, and then you're gonna pay for it at the time you order it. Then you'll go up to the counter, get your food once you get to the restaurant. Now, Peter, there is one minus to using this option. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought up the mobile ordering, Matt. Um, The one drawback that you just mentioned is that if you are on the dining plan, the mobile ordering unfortunately isn't for you. The mobile ordering does require that you have a card on file and that you pay for it in advance so that when you get to the restaurant or that quick service location, you can check in to say that you've arrived, go straight to one specific area of the counter where they deal with the mobile orders instead of waiting through the lines for the cash registers. So it 
is wonderful, especially if even if you have the dining plan, if you just want to grab a couple of quick things, but you don't want to use your entitlements, definitely keep that in mind that you do have that mobile order available at many of the quick service restaurants. And beyond the quick service locations, the last thing that I'm going to talk about before we jump into the different dining plans are snack carts. Now, snack carts can be very obvious. They could be a cart out in the middle of the midway that's selling things like pretzels and popcorn and ice cream bars and all of that stuff. Or I would even consider snack carts some of our permanent fixtures as well. So a couple of Magic Kingdom examples that come to mind are Aloha Isle Refreshments, which is the location of the famous Dole Whips. Gaston's Tavern in the back over by the aerial ride has some fantastic cinnamon rolls and other things. Cheshire Cafe up to the front has some specialty pastries. And then of course the Starbucks location or Main Street Cafe, which is Disney's way of hiding it, or is also a snack cart location. And at these locations, you're going to be able to use your snack credits. So as Matt and I talk about our entitlements, you're going to hear things like table service credit. That's going to be what Matt talked about. Quick service credit. That's what I just talked about and snack credits, which are going to be useful at the snack carts throughout your day. So one quick thing to kind of finish up on the lingo is we talk about snack credits and snack credits can be used at a lot of different locations, including some of your quick service restaurants, the snack carts, Starbucks, and those types of areas. What you're going to look for is there's a special icon next to those menu items that lets you know that you can redeem a snack credit for that item. And it's a little purple and white icon. And when you see that next to an item, you can use a snack credit for that item. So getting into the actual dining plans, um, Peter, why don't you talk a little bit about the quick service plan? So the quick service dining plan is what we would consider as the basic dining plan. It's sort of the entry tier. It's if you want your food prepaid so that you have these credits available to you, but you don't necessarily want to spend your time in the park sitting down for some of those more exclusive dining opportunities. If maybe you're going with older kids and so character meals are out, you don't want to sit down for two or three hours and have a dinner show experience and you don't need any of that, those fancier higher end dining things. A quick service plan is a really, really good thing to do. So first of all, let's talk about the entitlements that you get with that quick service plan. If you and everybody in your party get the quick service plan, you will get two quick service dining credits per person per day. And you will also get two snack credits per person per day. So if I'm talking about a family of four, my family of four would get eight quick service credits and eight snacks per day as a group. Now, we, we're we gonna talk a little bit later about some tips and how to get the most out of these, but just know that those are the entitlements that you'll get. While you're looking at your day, you're going to figure out what locations you might wanna eat at, and you're gonna be looking for those quick service locations. So you're not gonna want those table service, sit down locations that accept reservations. You're gonna be wanting to focus on the other locations. So as you're planning out your day, you're going to want to pick locations that you might want to go visit that is going to have some of those menu items that are going to fit your palate. Or with the quick service plan, it does offer you the most flexibility in your planning because now as you go into your vacation, you don't need to have specific restaurants to be at at certain times. You can go into the park with your fast passes and then just go find food in the area as it just fits into your schedule. So it is the most flexible plan and it is, as I said, sort of the most restrictive and, and basic dining plan that you can get. But there are still ways to make sure that you're getting your money out of it, which I'll discuss a little bit later. Now, Peter, one thing I like about the quick service plan and using those quick service entitlements is that if you have younger kids or you have some that are adventurous eaters and some that aren't adventurous eaters, this gives you the ability really to split up those credits to different restaurants. So you can go into, say, you know, especially like a place like uh, Animal Kingdom, and you can try some of that exotic cuisine there if you're an adventurous eater, but they still have places where your kids can pick up 
chicken nuggets and a cheeseburger and that kind of stuff. So you can you can use those credits very flexible to meet the needs of your family. If you do have a lot of different eaters, this is a good opportunity to have some a lot of flexibility because if you're using a table service credit, normally the whole family is going to sit down together. But with these quick service entitlements, you can kind of go off and get your own things, come back and meet and then eat together, but all have different meals. Peter, why don't you give us the next step up? This is our go-to dining plan when we're talking to our clients, the Disney dining plan. Matt, this plan, as you said, is sort of like the middle, right? So the quick service plan is the nice entry plan. This plan is sort of a best of both worlds, in my opinion. And as you just mentioned, it's the one that we talk to our clients, and this is the one that we sort of aim for. And I will also say that anytime I travel with my family to Disney World, this is the plan that I aim for because it fits my family's needs the best. In the Disney dining plan, it's going to be just a a little bit more expensive and when you talk about pricing you'll realize that the markup is not extreme I can't give you an exact amount however I can say that it's approximately about $15 per person per day so not too bad but that $15 is going to transform one of your credits and so let's talk about those entitlements in the quick service you get two quick service meals per day in the Disney dining plan, you get one quick service meal per person per day and one table service meal per person per day. And so it takes one of those quick service credits and turns it into a table service credit. Now you do still get those two snacks per person per day. Now the reason why this plan is so wonderful is because in my mind, it gives me the best of both worlds. It allows me in my schedule to book one of those nicer table service meals that Matt was discussing earlier and it still gives me the freedom and flexibility to determine where and when that other meal is going to occur. So one day I might book a breakfast and I might be able to figure out when and where I want my lunch slash dinner to come from. Whereas another day I might have a sit down dinner and we just sort of pick and snack and, and quick service our way up until that dinner at night. But having that sit down is incredibly important for couples going without kids and families alike. Because if you get into those table service meals for families especially now you're going to get those character meals and Matt's going to talk about those more later on but the character meals really make the Disney dining plan worthwhile in my opinion because I have seen many times where my bill from that character meal comes to my table and it's right around or even over $200 and then boom my four credits take care of that bill in its entirety and I look at how much I paid for the dining plan and I realized very quickly if I'm going to go to some of these nicer single credit dining table service experiences like the more exotic cuisine or the character meals that I'm going to very quickly get all of my money back in just the table service restaurants and and some of the quick service and then I'm going to have basically all of those snacks for free because that's the discount that I'm receiving here and so like I said the Disney dining plan is a very nice all-encompassing encompassing meal plan that gives me scheduling and flexibility at the exact same time. So this is the one that I'm very passionate about and that I feel is the go-to. Now, Matt, I know that your family really feels passionately about our last dining plan, which is why I'm going to throw it over to you to have you talk about the creme de la creme of Disney dining plans, the deluxe dining plan. Yeah, the deluxe dining plan in my family, I think the last four or five trips that we've gone down to the parks, we've really fallen in love with this. I've got two younger kids, so we do a lot of character meals. And what this dining plan entitles you to is you get three table service credits per person per day plus the two snack credits per person per day so with my family of four we're getting 12 table service credits and we're getting those eight snack credits every day now on top of that a table service credit with the deluxe plan is a little different because now it entitles you not only to that meal, but you also get an appetizer and alcoholic beverage if you're an adult with that table service entitlement. So it can add up to be a lot of food if you're constantly doing standard meal, 
single credit sit down options. Where this plan works is when you're looking at a lot of those multi-credit restaurants and we end up doing Be Our Guest for Dinner. We end up doing Royal Table. We end up doing the Spirit of Aloha dinner show at the Polynesian. So those take up two of our dining credits each day. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll do a character breakfast. We'll use our snack points for a snack at some point during the day for lunch. And then we'll do one of those multi-credit meals for dinner, depending on where we are. So this is a ton of food, like I said, if you decide to do it, credit, 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 all the way through your trip. You're gonna quickly get tired of eating and it's gonna suck a lot of time out of your day to sit down at restaurants and have that meal experience three times a day. But especially if you plan on going to some of those higher end restaurants, my wife and I are doing a trip here coming up. We're doing all of the nice restaurants. We're doing a single credit and a two credit each day we're down there so that we can experience experience some of the nicer restaurants that we don't necessarily get to experience when we have the kids with us. Peter, do you have anything else to add on the deluxe? Yeah, just sort of dining in general. So Matt mentioned that in the deluxe table service, you get the appetizer. And that's really the big difference between what you get table service in the dining plan versus the deluxe dining plan. In the regular dining plan, your table service does include the entree, the dessert, and the alcoholic beverage or standard beverage if you're not into that. But in the deluxe dining plan, your table service includes an appetizer, an entree, a dessert, and that alcoholic or non-alcoholic specialty beverage as well. So you just have to imagine that as you're thinking about eating at the deluxe dining credits, if you're going with a family of four, you get four appetizers. Now, the kids will likely get smaller little, you know, grapes, cheese, cracker type of plates, and you and your, and the other adult in your party are gonna each get to choose a full-size appetizer appetizer off of that. And so like Matt said, it's very important to realize that the food can sort of pile up with you. So if you are doing this, make sure that you're putting yourself enough time in between meals. My wife and I did the deluxe dining plan once and we put our meals at standard intervals of about four to five hours. And there were some restaurants that we got to and we were still stuffed because we had eaten two appetizers, each had an entree, each had a dessert. And so when we got to it, we were just sort of not prepared for or all of the food that the deluxe dining was going to give to us. So just make sure that you're planning smart and giving yourself enough time between those meals. But the table service does include that. And even the quick service, I will say, the quick service meals include an entree and an alcoholic or non-alcoholic specialty beverage off of the quick service location menus as well. Just so you have an understanding of what you're gonna get in each of those places. And that, that entitlement doesn't change from the Disney dining plan to the deluxe dining plan for the buffets. So it's the same entitlement with the buffets. So if it's, if it's a meal where you're ordering off a menu, there's the difference in the entitlement where you get that appetizer. And those appetizers are big. Most of the time they are shareable and you're going to get one for every adult that's in your party. But as for the buffets, table services, table services, table service credit for that it doesn't matter which plan you're on. It's the buffet entitlement. And that's what some of the character dining experiences are going to be are those buffet dining experiences. So Peter, we're gonna move on to the next section and that's gonna be some of our favorite food types and tips and our favorite restaurants. So why don't you start talking about um, some of the variety that you can find around the parks? A lot of people don't realize this, Matt, but when you go down to Walt Disney World, you can be in for a culinary experience just as much as you you are for an entertainment experience. Some of the best food I've had in my life has come out of a Disney kitchen and I've even gone to a tour called the Taste of Magic Kingdom where you walk around and you listen and see how Disney makes all of this dining happen and it's it's quite intriguing to see all of that. But there is food for every palate in your party and Matt kind of alluded to this earlier with his tip about how to kind of jump around quick service to find what everybody's looking for. But the sheer variety that you can get at Walt Disney World is, is absolutely boggling when you start to realize it. If we just talk about Epcot, as you work your way around that World Showcase, there is a table service and a quick service restaurant in every single pavilion for the most part. 
Some of the pavilions even have multiple table service meals inside of them. And so if you spend time in Epcot, you can have French cuisine for lunch, you can have Moroccan cuisine for dinner. You can then come back the next day and have a fantastic steak in Canada. You can have wonderful Mexican food over in the Mexico Pavilion. There are flavors and varieties for every single palate that you have in your party. And then it's not even just Epcot because obviously Epcot is the, well, duh, Peter, of course there's cuisine in the World Showcase. If you go to Animal Kingdom, you're gonna find some fantastic food in Africa and Asia. And there's even a great burger place over in Dino Land and a fantastic barbecue quick service location out in the front by Discovery Island. And then there's a very unique eclectic dining experience waiting for you in Pandora at Satuli Canteen. And so you can experience foods that you're just not gonna get at your local restaurants wherever you're from. And Disney has that waiting for you. Even Hollywood Studio has a wide variety of cuisine ranging from Italian to burgers and, and tons of other experiences. They have some fantastic brown derby as a, a wonderful fine signature dining experience. When you get down to Disney, if you're not spending time thinking about what you're eating, you're really selling yourself short because now if you're not taking dining into account before you get there, yeah, you're going to find yourself at a lot of burger stands and chicken sandwich stands and you're not going to know where to go to find all of these unique experiences that you can't get anywhere else. Matt, what else do you have to add about our, our Disney dining experiences? Well, just to kind of finish up your thought, there is a ton of variety down there. So another thing that's going on is the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. And it's a fall festival in Epcot. And they bring in all these different food stands and food carts from around the world. You can use a lot of your snack credits for tapas plates and stuff like that around this food and wine festival as well. So if that's something that you're into, if you're a foodie, if you like those unique flavors and unique tastes, it's a great thing to jump into and really look at it as part of your trip. Peter, do you have anything else? Yeah, so the food and wine festival is a fantastic thing to bring up, Matt, and I'm so upset that I didn't remember that myself um, because it takes those 11 countries and bus it into more than a hundred different local nationalities and regions of the world that are represented in all of these smaller carts around Epcot. In addition to that, I'll also let you, or I'll also make you aware of another festival that occurs in Epcot in the spring called the Flower and Garden Festival. And yes, they put topiaries and all these other visual things up, but they also beef up that food experience with different unique tastes. And so if you're a foodie, Epcot is a really, really great place for you to plan. A lot of times people with families think that there's not enough for their kids to do in Epcot. And they're, they're sorely mistaken because Epcot is fun for all ages and has some of the most amazing dining experiences that you can get. Thanks. And, and now I'm going to jump into a little bit about character dining and the buffets that are around the parks. So character dining at Disney is a huge deal. If you want one-on-one -on -one time with the characters, if you want those picture opportunities and food at the same time, there are plenty of places that you can go and meet a wide variety of the characters, whether it be inside the parks, in some of the resorts that they are there so that you can eat and you can meet characters and and do that all together character dining happens at a lot of restaurants and you want to look up those restaurants to see what type of character dining options there are some of them are only character dining in the morning for breakfast like Trattoria Al Forno where it's Rapunzel and Flynn Rider, Prince Eric and Ariel. But there's other ones like Chef Mickey's and Crystal Palace which are character dining all day and they just change the buffet depending on what time of day it is. So really what you want to do is you know get on the My Disney Experience website, look at those restaurants and see where those character meals are. And if you have any questions about the character dining, I think I've done all of them now. So me too, man, <laughs> me too. I think it's something that we're pretty well versed in. Uh, our kids are about the same age and, and we've been doing the character dining, I know with my daughter for about seven years now. So we've hit everywhere that has a character. And, and we can talk to you about our favorites and how to build those into your days. Now, as far as the buffets, 
I love to use the buffets as a, a lighter dining option throughout the day, whether it be a light breakfast or kind of a light lunch between two heavier meals. We'll use that character dining experience at a buffet to really pick and choose what we want. Maybe just grab a salad and, and a light entree or something like that, but really break up those heavy meals in that deluxe dining plan with the buffet. With the buffets though, my family's the exact opposite as Matt because we normally don't do the deluxe dining plan. So I like to book the buffets knowing that I can sort of take in as much as I possibly want. Then I know that I have a nice big hearty meal coming at one of these buffets. My kids get to meet the characters and then I can then know that a quick service credit is more than enough to get me through the rest of the day because I'm going to come out stuffed. So I think that wraps up the variety of food around the parks. Peter, why don't you tell us a couple of your favorite restaurants? Absolutely. And I, I'm going to have you do the same as well in just a moment, Matt. But just a couple of restaurants to highlight that, as Matt said, he's been to just about every buffet and I'm the exact same way I've been to just about every character experience. I can personally say that I've eaten at all the table service restaurants in Magic Kingdom, all but two of them in Epcot, all of them in Hollywood Studios, and all but one in Animal Kingdom. Just haven't found my way into Tiffin's yet, but I'm hoping to do that here in the next few trips. But a couple of my favorites, so the standouts in all of the dining that Matt and I have ever experienced, two of my absolute favorites, one of them is Akershush. Now, Akershush is a restaurant in the Norway Pavilion of Epcot, home of the famous and very noteworthy, especially if you have younger kids, the Frozen Ever After ride. And the Akershush restaurant is a character dining experience where you're gonna get to meet the same types of princesses that you would meet at Cinderella's Royal Table. Except instead of Cinderella waiting for you, you have Belle waiting for you. So you get to start your experience meeting Belle, then you head to your table. Once you sit down, there is a fantastic appetizer buffet area where you can get some unique Norway things, some very special cheeses and salads, as well as some more traditional things that, that you're going to find more familiar that are, that are around American cuisine. And then as you order from your menu, the princesses are going to make their way to your table, interact with your kids, and you're going to get to meet some of these Disney princesses. And the food on this menu is just absolutely fantastic. I have had many, many things on that menu because I constantly find myself always booking Akershush every time that we go because it is one of my absolute favorite restaurants. And what's great about Akershush is I get to meet the princesses and it's only a single dining credit. So it doesn't blow my budget in my Disney dining plan. So one thing that I love about Akershush is I'm not an adventurous eater, but breakfast there is a family style breakfast so you can still get some of those those neat appetizers and some seafood options and it has a pastry buffet but for the meal for breakfast it's your standard bacon and eggs and that kind of stuff that your kids are gonna enjoy and not kind of push away because they don't like the food because for lunch and dinner they can have some pretty unique flavors on that menu yeah and that's a wonderful point Matt in the breakfast it's more traditional American cuisine and in lunch and dinner it's traditional Norway cuisine cuisine where they bust out the Norwegian menu. You're going to see meatballs and fish dishes and chicken dishes, but they're all going to have that Norwegian flair to them. The other restaurant that I really want to talk about for you is Be Our Guest. Be Our Guest is such a fun restaurant because at Be Our Guest, you get to walk up, go through the gates, and then walk into the Beast Castle. And it has three unique rooms where you can dine. The first one that you walk into is the Grand Ballroom where Belle and Beast share that famous dance. The room to the left is very unique because it is dark and it's the West Wing. So in there, you're going to find the rose and the ripped portrait of Beast, but the lighting can be difficult to adjust to. So make sure that if you do want to dine in there, that you scope it out first and really make sure that that is where you want to spend the next hour of your life. If not, check out that area, take a look around, and then choose one of the other two because you can choose the ballroom or over to the right of that, you have what I call the library, but really it's it's a statue of Bell and Beast dancing. And then all around the room, there are murals painted of different iconic scenes of that movie and so that's a really cool room to sit in as well because you get to look at at each of those pictures as you're enjoying your food waiting for it to be served and you get to just kind of relive the movie magic so it's an awesome experience and on top of that here's the most unique thing about be our guest in the breakfast and lunch 
lunchtime. They have an awesome menu, but it's quick service. So you're going to pre-order your food either in advance or when you arrive at the restaurant. You're going to sit down at your table and hand your receipt to a server who's then going to bring your food out on a cart and serve it to you at your table. So it's a quick service, but it's a little bit different, but it's great that I can use again in my Disney dining plan. It's great that I can use a quick service for such a unique dining experience and the breakfast and lunch menus are just fantastic. There are great options on that breakfast and lunch menu. And then what's really cool about Be Our Guest is that it transforms at night into a two credit dining table service option where you go in and you sit down and you're waited on and the menu changes to a much fancier higher end cuisine and and just sort of the whole experience changes from very hustle and bustle during the breakfast and lunch to much more organized and sit down and find signature dining. And what's cool about this is it is the only place in all of Disney World where you can meet Beast. So after dinner, you are welcome to go over to Beast Study, which is normally an ordering area during the day. It turns into his area where he gets to meet and greet. And a quick tip about this, if you're going with a young daughter, it is worthwhile to put her in a bell dress before she goes and meets Beast because Beast is very gracious and cordial with everybody, but he really steps his game up when his princess walks through the door and I don't want to spoil it for you any more from that but it is worth taking that bell dress in your backpack when you go and meet Beast. So Matt I've obviously shared my two favorites what are a couple of favorites that you and your family must go to every time you go to Disney? So I'm going to start off with one that's a very controversial one because a lot a lot of people kind of pass it up because it's it's a very familiar dining experience but in the Japan pavilion there's a hibachi place called Teppanito. I go there every time. I think it's fantastic. My family thinks it's fantastic. We have great memories there and we actually build it into our dining plan to where we can watch the illuminations or whatever fireworks display is going to be there as we go back in the future from the balcony outside of the restaurant. So if you get a later reservation, 715, 730, you can kind of time it well to where you can walk out of the restaurant, just hang out on the balcony around the front of the restaurant, and you can watch that show from the balcony and not be down in the crowd with everybody else there. But the food there, very, very diverse menu. So you have your normal Japanese cuisine you have a, some sushi, a lot of different Japanese culture items on the menu. And then you have your normal hibachi chicken and steak and that kind of stuff. So kids, very easy for them to eat at this restaurant. Adults, you can kind of go out there and have some different flavors. Um, I have a, an allergy to fish, so they take it very well into account, cook my food so there's no contact contamination or anything like that. Very good restaurant. I always have a great experience there. They put on a fun show show because you're at the hibachi grill you have them cutting up cooking the food right in front of you the chefs all have really really good personalities so it's a lot of fun then my other favorite is probably one of the hardest reservations to get and it's royal table and this is another character dining experience in the cinderella's castle so you go to Cinderella's castle. She meets you in the foyer. You take pictures with her. Um, then you wait for your table to be ready. You go up a spiral staircase or an elevator if it's needed to the royal dining room and it overlooks the back side of the park. So it overlooks the carousel and fantasy land out the back side of the park. It's such a neat view. And once you get up there, you get to meet four additional princesses. They do a lot of fun stuff with the kids. It's really focused to the kids, but the food there is fantastic. I've had just about every meal that I can there, and the food is very, very high quality. So you get what you pay for at this restaurant, whether it's the two table service credits, or I believe it's a price fix menu at $65 per adult right now. So when you're thinking about that, you're not gonna be able to pick and choose off the menu. You go in there, pay one price, appetizer, entree, dessert. So Peter, what are your tips about using the dining plans? 
Yeah, my number one thing and, and something that I've learned over the years, because I didn't have this right off the bat. This is something that I can share with you so that you can go in and sort of learn from my mistake is you really want to get the most out of your credit. So Matt and I have spent a lot of time talking about the dining plans and why they're so good. But if you're not going to go to the character meals, if you're not going to go to some of the more signature dining, if you're not going to go to some of the restaurants that have unique cuisines if you're just gonna hit the restaurants that have 20 to 30 dollar plates at the table service restaurants and you're gonna go to all of the quick service restaurants that have 10 to 15 dollar items and you're not a drinker the dining plan might not be right for you because you might end up spending at or even more than you would have if you would have just gone out of pocket. So it's really important to plan to make sure you're getting the most out of your credits. So what I mean by that is a table service credit, you really wanna be using them for those character or those more unique cuisine restaurants because your character meals are gonna run you around 40 to $50 per adult and a little bit less per kid. And so that really starts adding up cost-wise if I'm paying that out of pocket. If I go to some of the nicer one service restaurants like Skipper Canteen or Coral Reef, I'm gonna be able to order a $40 meal and I'm gonna be able to use a table service credit. But if I go to somewhere like Side and I don't get an alcoholic beverage and I ordered a $19 burger, that's not a really good use of my table service credit because I really didn't get a lot of cost out of it. Now, if I go to Sci-Fi, which is an awesome dining experience, and I get that $14 cocktail and that $8 dessert, well, yeah, now I've boosted my my dollars per point up to a level that I know I'm getting a lot out of it. So when I go, I like to plan that my table service credits are going anywhere from 40 to $60 per credit to know that I'm really getting the bang for my buck. And the same thing goes with quick service credits. I can find stuff for 10 or $11, or I can order things for 15 to $20. Not saying that you should always go and order the most expensive thing on the menu, but I should plan my location so that I'm getting the most food and the most cost-effective food for my dollar. In addition to that, when traveling with kids, a quick service credit is not age specific. So I just recently went for that pass holder preview with my son and he and I got the quick service dining plan. But when we got to the quick service location, I used a quick service credit and I paid for my son's quick service meal because a child quick service meal is about six to seven dollars at pretty much every location. So I was running my quick service credits at about $25 a person because I was getting the nicer entree and one of those nice beverages. And then I was just room charging my six to $7 son's meal. So I got more quick service credits out of it and he still had plenty to eat off of, off of his plate. And so really be smart about how you're planning your credits. Those quick service credits can be used really, really smartly. And you can look at how your kids are eating off of maybe snack credits or cheaper kids menu items and you can use those quick service credits. So if I have a family of four, my wife and I can use two quick service credits for breakfast, two quick service credits for lunch, and then my family can go use my table service credits for dinner. And I sort of like snack and pick and choose my kids meals throughout the day to make sure that they're getting plenty of food as well. In addition to that, one more quick tip about the quick service credit is a quick service dining credit can be ripped apart and used as three snacks simultaneously. So if we go up to a stand and we see there are, you know, three $8 snacks, we can make that a quick service credit. So we can grab $7.95, $7.95, $7.95. We can grab three Dole Whip floats and call that a quick service credit or head to Starbucks in the morning and grab two really expensive, you know, venti lattes and then a breakfast sandwich or a cinnamon roll for us to pick at as a family and turn that into a quick service credit. So it's really important to know that sort of tip as you're planning yourself up and using your credits, especially
especially if you go during food and wine or flower and garden, to walk up to one of those kiosks, one of those stands, and turn my quick service credit into three things that they have there at six or seven dollars a piece, and one of their alcoholic beverages at that stand is a really smart way to attack the food and wine festival so you don't gobble up all of your credits grabbing one thing at each stand. So those are my tips. Matt, I'm sure you have a really important tip for everybody out there. Well, my tip is really about dining outside of the parks. You don't have to have a park ticket to go to some of these really, really nice and really, really cool restaurants. Not only do your moderate and deluxe resorts have dining options, table service dining options, character dining options, but there's also Disney Springs that has a multitude of dining options and a lot of them will accept the Disney dining plan. So really you've got a ton of options if you just wanna go down there, take that day off from the parks and just explore different areas, whether it is going to the Magic Kingdom resorts and seeing what they're all about or going to Disney Springs and it's an outdoor mall and grabbing some food while you're over there. There are a ton of places outside of the park where you can get really, really good food. Peter, do you have anything else for us? No, Matt, I think we've covered it and I don't have any more tips. And I think we've done a really thorough job explaining all of the different dining that's available here at Walt Disney World. And the reason why we would maybe make that decision to get that dining plan or plan out that maybe the dining plan isn't for us today and on this trip. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the DPI podcast and make sure to follow us on our anchor and all our other social media platforms to keep aware of when the next ones are coming out. And we'll see you next time. Turn your Disney dream into a magical Disney vacation with Princesses and the Mouse Disney Travel. Contact us at any of these options or learn more by clicking the website link below.